briefly give you a description of what this next 45 minutes will look like. We have a welcome. Alan Armijo is here representing the office of the Mayor Tim Keller, City of Albuquerque. He will be next on our agenda. Right after that, we will hear from our Navajo Nation Honorable Vice President Jonathan Ness, Honorable Joanne Jane, Chief Justice of the Navajo Nation, Mr. Manny Wheeler, representing the Navajo Nation Museum, Aaron Roth from the Bosque Redondo Memorial Museum. We also have our website that will officially be launched today. After that, we appreciate the questions and the comments from the community in this room. Without further ado, I'd like to ask Mr. Aaron Nieto from the office of the Mayor Tim Keller to please come on up. Thank you. Good afternoon, buenas tardes. I'm Alan Armijo, Director of Constituent Services in the office of the Mayor Timothy Keller. We just got notice yesterday about this and he was trying to figure out if he could come, but he asked me to represent him uh, in this, I think, momentous occasion. Uh, Mayor Keller says thank you and welcome to all of you uh, for having this in Albuquerque and participating and we hope to be a participant uh, when everything kicks off. I want to welcome the Vice President, uh, Vice President Nez, and, and thank him for inviting us here as well as the Chief Justice of the Navajo Nation, Ms. Jane. Uh, thank you very much on behalf of Mayor Keller and thank you for having us participate on this uh, occasion. I think for those who are close to my age and, and for you younger ones who probably studied history understand uh, the history of the Long Walk and, and the history behind it and 150 years ago how difficult it was for the, the Dene people and everything that they went through on that Long Walk to Fort Sumner and to the Bosque there and, and then when the treaty was signed so that the people could get back to their land and, and get back where they were raised and, and where they knew and where they could worship and, and raise their families. It certainly is, needs to be celebrated, although it was not a great moment in our history, but if we don't celebrate and remember, then we forget. And we cannot let those kind of things happen uh, to people again. And by keeping this memory alive and doing the things that is going to happen now with the run and going through all the different communities, you keep that alive for future generations so that that does not happen again. We hope that at the time when the runners and the participants come through Albuquerque that we have some notice uh, because certainly Mayor Keller is a runner. If he can participate in running through parts of Albuquerque with the participants, he'd love to do that and at the very least greet them. So we hope to participate in some way here in the future. Uh, certainly uh, the Don Begay, who is our Native American liaison for the city of Albuquerque, works for me on a part-time basis and we'll be in touch with her as well. So. Uh, I'll leave my information here so we can uh, participate in the future. Again, thank you for the invitation. Thank you on behalf of Mayor Keller. We hope we have a good run. Thank you, Mr. Armijo. It is now that I ask our Navajo Nation Vice President, Mr. Jonathan Nez, to provide us his remarks. Mr. Nez. Oh, thank you, Yvonne. And uh, good afternoon to everybody, uh, the, the Navajo relatives of mine. Yat e, ado she she hinslon tat nessa ni ibasis chin, ado tude chin ni dasit che, ado tat chin ni dasit nana. Shan tone e sinasha do, kado e sinanis, sha adasta giba hens ando bineslon kat. So, and I wanted to say to everyone that's here for the uh, press conference, thank you for being here. Thanking you, thanking each and every one of you and helping us to magnify this event, not just for the Navajo people, not just for New Mexico, but I think for all of the Southwest. And I want to say uh, thank you on behalf of President Russell Begay and myself, uh, we are commemorating the Treaty of 1868 and the signing. But before I go and do that, I want to, as was mentioned earlier by uh, Mayor Killer's office, uh, the long walk. We are taught in schools 
about the long walk, and I'm sure many of you know that history, that point in time of hardship for the Navajo people. You know, we, we even the state of Arizona and the curriculum there, they tell us about that history. The west, westward expansion, lands being taken from indigenous peoples. Uh, they call that the, there's a, a word used called the Indian problem. The Indian problem was that uh, they felt like the Native Americans uh, during that time were getting in the way. But for us indigenous people, we were there fighting for our way of life, our culture, and a continuation of our language. That's what we were doing. And so many of us are challenging academics, younger generations, to begin to rewrite history from our own perspective, from our own lens. And that's, we're hoping this commemoration will begin that movement of retelling history from the Native American perspective. And so we welcome you here. The removal from Navajo land uh, happened from 1863 to 1866. Over 11,500 Navajos were marched to Fort Sumner between the same years, 1863 through 1866. And only 8,500 made it to Fort Sumner. We lost a lot of our relatives on the way. And we hear that in our textbooks. We hear that from the stories of our relatives of how people persevered as they went from the Navajo homeland to Bosque Redondo Reservation, Fort Sumner. Some escaped while many perished on the route. But let us also remember that not everyone, not every Navajo, went on the long walk. That's one part of history that we also need to be retold, is that many of the Western Navajo residents were hiding out in canyons up in the mesas, and fearful of the cavalry at the time. They went through three, four winters, and at times never were able to start a fire for warmth because they didn't want the smoke to be seen by the cavalry and be captured. And so we honor them as well during this time. In the Treaty of 1868, negotiations began in the spring of 1868, led by General William T. Sherman and Colonel Samuel Tappan. And this year we found out that there are three copies of the treaty. One copy went to the archives, National Archives in Washington, D.C. The second went to the Navajo people. And the third was given to Commissioner Tappan at the time. And he uh, put that away and later not too long ago the family of Tappan found that that third copy was in existence and we'll be talking about that today as well and then the Navajo copy is still a mystery uh, we don't know where it's at you know, it always brings me to that movie National Treasure right? maybe it's something like that I don't know but there were three copies, and we would have never known that until this year, until we really began to educate our Navajo people and our friends or, uh, that are not Navajo about what is being commemorated with the, the treaty sign. And the return home. The treaty was signed, and the return home. I want to say that on May 31st, there's going to be a Navajo National Day of Prayer up in San Benito. And all faiths are going to be coming together to have a day of prayer for our nation and our friends in and around our nation. A prayer for healing, a 
restoration and to also remember our ancestors but at the same time also pray for the future of our great Navajo Nation. It is our turn, and I say this to the young people out there, it's our turn to begin to fight, if you may, to advocate for the continuation of our way of life, our culture, our tradition, and our language for the next 150 years. You see. And so we invite you to join us on May 31st in San Benito, New Mexico. And then June 1st will be the opening day of uh, the treaty display. The original treaty that's coming from the National Archives to Window Rock. You get to see, our people are going to get to see the original treaty of 1868. So back to what I was saying about the uh, the treaty and the return home. See, in in schools and in universities, we, we are taught about this long walk of the Navajos. Coming, being herded together, taking on a, on a hard trip to Fort Sumner. The signing of the Treaty of 1868, of our ancestors being a part of that negotiation. That's what we hear and that's what we uh, are taught in our schools. But sometimes that's where it ends. A lot of times that history that is being taught to our children and to all of New Mexico, all of Arizona ends right there. And you wonder what happened after the signing of the treaty. And we are hoping that with this commemoration we will tell that story from the signing of the Treaty of 1868, the return home, and 150 years of strength, 150 years of resilience of our Navajo people. You know, we were not wanted in this land at one time, and there was almost a total, total annihilation of our people. But let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, 150 years later, we are, I'm a little biased here being the Vice President of the Navajo Nation, but we are the most influential indigenous nation in the world. And that's been from the folks that came back, 8,000 or so coming back from Fort Sumner, to now 350,000 strong in Navajo population. The land that was just given back to us, if you see where that says the Treaty of 1868, that brown part there, that was the land that was returned to the Navajo people during that time. And look at today. Over 27,000 square miles of Navajo land we just bought that little piece in Colorado, as you see up there. And we're buying back some of our land. But it is for our future and for our younger generation that this commemoration is being done for. is to re-educate our people, to educate our younger population, to let them know that they can accomplish whatever they want in life. And it's no secret, ladies and gentlemen, that we have problems in tribal communities. We have domestic violence, sexual violence. We have alcoholism, drug addiction. We have suicide ideations. We have diabetes and heart disease. But let me tell you, that if we magnify the story of resilience and overcoming tough times, just imagine how many of our people out there will know that they're able to quit the habit of alcoholism or drug addiction, to not hurt others, to be able to take care of your body health-wise. And those are the teachings that have lasted throughout generations and generations. 
And I always use this example. Many of us were told to get up in the morning, pray, and run before the sun comes up. I mean, that was some tough love back then. But that was a teaching of resilience, you see. A teaching from our ancestors of not to give up when tough times come. And we all know tough, con tough times come in certain shapes and sizes. And this commemoration is not just for the Navajo people. It's for all people. It's for all of New Mexico. It's for all of the Southwest. I have stories that come saying that a non-native coming up to me, Vice President, Vice President, my great-grandfather was a cavalryman back in the days that the Indians were, were rounded up and, and put through this harshness. Forgive me. And I say, it wasn't your fault. You had nothing to do with it. But just imagine that that guilt from one generation to the next has hurt that family or that community. And what this run that is being proposed is to go out and let people know that we're not going anywhere. Navajos are not going anywhere. Non-Indians are, are, are white friends. All the nationalities, we're not going anywhere. We're going to have to work together to help each other out. And it's time for us to come together as one and to heal and to move forward as a people. That's the bigger story that this commemoration is all about. Restoring, restoration, forgiveness, and to move forward as a United States citizen, you see. And so, on the return home, if you can imagine coming back over 400 miles from Fort Sumner all the way back to Fort Defiance. We had to go up north, close to Santa Fe, come back in through Albuquerque. As Navajo people saw their sacred mountain, Mount Taylor, there was some joy knowing that they were going back home to their homeland. And we hear stories of that, and many of us have that stories within our family. And we came down in from the Tejeras right here into Old Town, where we're at. This is the reason why we're here today, ladies and gentlemen. We wanted to have this press conference here at Old Town in the area. Because guess what? This is where the Navajo people came down. And they congregated and had fellowship with not just Navajos, but the Hispanic people, the non-Navajos. There was a rejuvenation here, a revival type here in this community. And the folks, the friends of the Navajos fed them, the Navajo people here in this area and helped them across the Rio Grande. 10,000, 8,000 or so Navajos coming back from Fort Sumner, that was 10 miles of Navajo people walking all the way through. And so it took some time to get through the Rio Grande, across the Rio Grande here. And then the folks here helped each other out, you see. We lost a lot of people on the way to Fort Sumner because of that harshness. We lost a lot of our Navajo relatives. But the story here that I want to magnify as well is that, you know what? On the way home, not one Navajo person died from violence on the way back. That shows that everyone worked together to get each other home. You know, there was some death from old age, some sickness, but not from violence because everybody was happy to go back to their homeland and they helped each other out, you see. As they got up to the top, they saw the Mount Taylor and all those Pueblo tribes along the way helped the Navajos get home. So we want to also say thank you I know there are many Pueblo tribes representatives here. We also want to say thank you for your help in getting us home. 
And so the centennial, 50 years ago, in 1968, the Navajo Nation Council allocated 180,000 for a centennial celebration and commemorative reenactment walk from Fort Sumner to Navajo Nation. Also in 68, they declared a century of progress by Chairman Raymond Nakai. And now at 150 years, in 2015, the Navajo Nation Museum began plans to bring the original treaty of 1868 to Winter Rock, and Manny will mention that in a bit. On February 9th of this year, the three branches of government, we do have Chief Justice uh, Joanne Jane here with us, also Speaker Lorenzo Bates, coming together and doing a proclamation declaring 2018 as the year of Nalso Sana, the year of the treaty. On March 13, 2018, the Navajo Nation signed a loan agreement for the treaty. On March 15, 2018, we visited Bosque Redonda Memorial. And the reason why I bring this up is I've never been to Bosque Redonda because a lot of our people out there have told us you don't return back to that time, time of suffering, that place of suffering. But I think overall now, there's an open discussion about, we have to talk about this history in our life. Especially now that the English language is more prevalent on the Navajo Nation than it is Navajo. The Navajo language is going down. Our way of life teaching is going down. And so if we say don't talk about it, then we're doing a disservice to our people. And we need to document this history and even our medicine people are opening, opening up and having this discussion. The Hatkhali Advisory Council supports what the group has been doing, including the run as well. We do have Elmer Begay here, our cultural advisor, uh, who was uh, meeting this morning with the Hatkhalis, the medicine people. That news beat you here, sir. But thank you for your advocacy. Um, and then, for me, being at the memorial was really emotional for me. And as a leader of the nation, you know, I mean, there's just so much burden that one can only take. But I know that there's a God that will take all that burden, not just for me, but for all the Navajo people out there and all the people in the Southwest. That if we rise together, great things can happen in our neighborhoods and our communities. So the significance and the present day education, we want our young, younger generation to know about our history. Suicide is happening in our backyards. It's no secret. Alcohol and drug addiction, violence. But what this will do is to inspire and to encourage our people out there that they can give up. To jump back up, dust themselves off, and fight even harder than ever before for what they believe in. And if this can be magnified even tenfold on our nation. It will have a great impact for the future of the Navajo Nation. And there's going to be also a function here with the help of a lot of the religious leaders that are in attendance as well. The run is in your packet. There's posters out there. I don't want to go day by day, but those are the communities that we're going to be running through. We want to highlight health and wellness. We got diabetes and heart disease in our community. We want to let our folks know to take better care of themselves. And that's what we want to promote through this run. It's not a reenactment, but we want to promote health and wellness. Also, our language perseverance, a continuation of our language 
and our way of life teaching. And we'll be having counselors along the way because it's going to be an emotional trek for me. Not just Navajos, but for all people. And you're all welcome to join. And I do plan... Pray for me, pastors. I do plan to run every segment of this route 400 miles for the Navajo people. And there'll be a prayer here as well when we arrive here. And we're hoping uh, Mayor uh, Keller can join us when we come in. There's going to be a lot of communities that are going to be welcoming the runners as we go through. And we'll be coming here to Old Town to do just a day of fellowship and to just commemorate this era and time for Navajo people. And so the theme here, Ina na sirier be hadaanilne, in my opinion, means resilience. Resilience. We love the word to use that a lot in uh, academia. But do we really understand what resilience is? Resilience is overcoming tough times. And you know tough times is not immune. We're not immune to tough times in life. We become the teacher, especially if we go through some tough times. We become that teacher to help someone else go through some, some of the similar times that we go through. And that's what we want to help each other out, all people. So with that said, we want to say thank you for being a part of this press conference. There's many uh, other statements that, that are going to be made today. And there will be a question and answer segment towards the end. But again, thank you, thank you for being here and helping us to magnify this testament of who we are as Navajo people, as well as being friendly neighbors to a lot of the folks here in the state of New Mexico. So with that, God bless you. God bless the state of New Mexico. And God bless our great Navajo Nation. So thank you very much. It is my honor and my privilege to introduce our next speaker, um, Chief Justice Joanne Jane. Would you please come on up? Thank you. <laughs> 